What's up, everybody? It's Schmitty again with another episode of Talking Schmidt. And today on the program, we're going down Highway 5. We're going to go east on 198. We're going to look out for VSL and ask around for the legendary Jesse Paez. I known Jesse for a long time. I think I met him in like 96 or 97. Poncho and I drove down to Hanford and skated a park with him. And the first day I filmed with him was that day. He fucking blew my mind. I was like, this guy's really good. I mean, everybody's good, but this guy's really good. And we've fucking hung a lot throughout all the years. Recently, I met up with him, Richard, Jason, Jesse, and uh, Andy Roy in Sacramento. And him and Richard are like, dude, we want on the pod. And I was like, I want you on the pod. Without further ado, here he is, kids. Jesse motherfucking Piaz. I am stoked. There you are. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Yeah. We How you did. doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing Fuck really good. Yeah, I like the backdrop, man. Looking good. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. This is my little spare room right here. And I just going to turn into a little trophy room, you know, little, with all my memorabilia, all my skateboards and stuff. Have you cl- have you saved one of every board you have? You know what? I sure did, dude. Oh, that I, got, rules. I, got, I got every board that I ever came out with except one. Oh, and uh, it was probably one of my second or third boards on Consolidated. And they had all the happy faces going around in a circle and just said my name on it. You know, like the happy face emoji. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was that one. We got to put a uh, all points bulletin out. Make sure we get somebody's got to have that out there. Yep. Yep, it's got to be out there somewhere. I Someone did send me a picture of one that they had that they had skated already. It was oh. all scratched up and stuff, but uh, okay. there's, there's some out there floating around somewhere. Yeah, huh. Blood wizards. Blood wizards. Blood wizards. Blood wizards. Hey, it's Corey at Blue Plate, 3218 Mission Street. Come see us. Meatloaf, fried chicken, deviled eggs, Dollar Olympia beers. We're here every day of the week. We got a garden and we got smiles on our faces. Come let us make you happy. This is Jesse Paez and you're watching Talking Schmidt. Hey, hey, hey. Talking Schmidt. I'm already not watching. It's cool, like tonight is the night. Damn, this is like the coolest thing I'm ever gonna do. I wouldn't say it was fun. What do you mean, bro? Christian Fletcher's younger brother. Fuck the Dodgers. Oh, big dog's in. What do you think, Dolan? John, Schmitty. Talking Schmidt. Alpha macaroni. Most of these guys, their opinion don't matter. Talking Schmidt, right? It's skateboarding. I remember that. Talking Schmidt. What are yuns doing? Holy shit. Skateboarding homies. No, Schmidt, you can't jump in. What is happening? Yay! Yes, we are. <laughs> Wi-Fi check one. Wi-Fi check two. All right, kids. This one is dear to my heart. I've known this guy for a long time, and uh, me and McKenny have been talking about all the old think days with Wade and Phil and everybody. And this guy, his name is a huge part of that chunk of our life gear up and get ready put the coffee in front of you because i'm fucking fired up today we have from visalia jesse paez what's good jesse man everything's going great bro just out here working a lot right now truck driving Uh uh-huh yep i'm hauling milk and uh yeah it's great dude i'm stoked man i I just got a brand new Peterbilt recently. Woo! So, yeah, we're talking this huge truck, you know what I mean? It's like 150 grand and straight from Texas, you know, custom built for us. And it, it's it's stoked, man. It, it makes work a lot easier, you know what I mean? Have you ever talked to Wade Spire about driving those things? Yeah, yeah. Actually, me and Wade, we stayed in contact and... We talk a lot and it's all truck driving. You know what I mean? It's pretty cool. We go back and forth about our trucks and what we do. And 
Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Wade's, Wade's pretty, pretty dope. Dude, uh, me and my wife, because my wife has a little cottage up um, about 45 minutes east of Wade's house. One day I was hit talking to Wade somehow. I was like, we're driving up this way. He's like, stop by my house, fucker. And he had been <laughs> drinking and whatever. And I come in. My wife's never met him. And we come in and he's like, you want to try to back up my truck? I bet you can't do it. You know, he's got that, <laughs> the two connected and I yeah. fucking wrestled it for like a half hour. And he's just laughing at me. And finally, he's like, you can't do it. <laughs> yeah, things no. ain't easy to reverse. It's not easy, especially that. That's probably a set of doubles, you know? Yeah. So you turn in one one way and the back one wants to go another way. And <laughs> it's pretty complicated. You got to have skills to do that. Right. Um, one thing I didn't know was you weren't actually born in Visalia. You were born uh, where? Santa Monica or something, right? I was born in Santa Monica. Okay. And uh, I lived in Culver City in, Culver in City. L.A. Yeah, okay. so I'm born and raised out there. And that's pretty much where I started skateboarding, me and Richard. Okay. Yeah, because you were, you were like, what, a teenager when you moved to Visalia? Yeah, I think I was around 14 years old. And uh, my mom, it was pretty gnarly down there where we lived, you know, a lot of our friends were turning into gang members and passing away. And mm. at that time, my mom was dating this guy who worked for Southern California Edison. And they came up to Visalia on a company softball trip and they fell in love with the town and just thought it would be a good place to raise her kids, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah, so it worked out, got us out of there, came up here, and we just started living the Central Cali life up here, you know? How did, uh, how developed were you as a skater at that point? Was it still pretty green for you when you moved to Visalia, or had you, like, were you skating pretty well or not yet? Um, I mean, that was pretty much the beginning of it. I, I did start, me and Richard started in LA, you know, around, 10, 11, 12 years old, we were always skating around on our knees until we learned how to stand up and do yeah. ollies. Yeah. And, uh, we lived on Kinston, which is, you know, a pretty rough little street right there. But behind us was the Crest Hills. So there were all these hills and wow. we would always go up there and bomb the hills on our butt. You know what I mean? And we just fell in love with skateboarding back then. We were always either riding bikes or skateboarding one week we might even be roller skating like we did it all back then you know same yeah we were really into bmx and jumping and shit and then like when we got into skating the jump ramp showed up and like it was just we wanted to be in the air yeah yeah same here and when we were kids my mom was dating um which is my sister's dad now richie and him and his buddies we were just little kids. They were probably in their teens, but they actually had a quarter pipe behind the houses, the apartments there where we lived. And as kids, we would watch them skate. And it was on after that. Like we just loved what they had a like five foot tall quarter pipe. Uh -huh. And yeah, that was just, that was the beginning of it right there. And after that, we never put a skateboard down. Like we were just skating all the time. And then we moved to Visalia up here and, didn't really know no one, but there was a local skate shop at the time called Inland Surf Shop. Mm. And yeah, my mom. Was that in Bakersfield or Visalia or where? It was actually in Visalia. Oh. Yeah. And, and that's where we kind of met like Dale Blackman. We were young, though, you know, uh -huh. well, like the older crew, like Karma and Dale and all them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We kind of met them like around that time around Did the skate shop there. Did, was Tom Knox already like an established, like, did you know who he was before you met him? No, actually, I didn't. I had yeah. to move to Visalia and discover all that. When I lived in L.A., I didn't know anything about pro skaters, uh -huh. um, except like a couple of the locals there. I went to El Rincon Elementary School in L.A., and at that time, like, they don't do it anymore, but some pro skaters did a demo at our school when we were little kids oh, and then John Thomas, JT, yep. um, Eric Dressen. I want to say Bill Danforth might've been there. 
Huh. And um, yeah, that was the first time I ever seen a pro skater, you know? Was it like Alva demo or something? I, I think it might have been. Okay. Right. Yep. And then we weren't too far from Venice Beach. So anytime we'd go to the beach, mm. we would see that was back in the Launch Ramp days when Christian Hasoy and Chris Cook and these dudes were doing the big wall rides with the ramp that goes vertical up to the wall. Yeah. yeah it, it was cool, man. Tim Jackson and like Tim Jackson, uh, Aaron yeah. Murray um, and Scott Oster. Yeah. Yeah. Scott Oster. Yep. I seen them all as a little kid, not really knowing who they are. Uh -huh. But as I got older, I was like, oh, shit, those are the dudes that I was watching when I was a little kid, you know? That's amazing. What's what's one of the first, like, when you look back, do you remember one, like, video that, like, was one of the first ones that you popped in and then you were like, you know, the, when we saw a video for the first time, that definitely was a huge, that was, like, probably, like, 20 stairs, like, change in your skateboard, and you're like, Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say the early Santa Cruz, like streets on fire, wheels on fire. Okay. My Nottis. Favorite, Nottis was my guy. You know, that was the legend that I looked up to the pickpocket man, dude, man, spinning on the hydrant. And yeah, yeah. That's it. You know, it was either like Nottis or guns, but I was a Nottis guy. I literally mm. had, every photo Nottis had came out with on my wall. Like my wall was just covered in Nottis photos. Oh, okay. That's how I wanted to skate. And cause he went big, you know, yeah. remember the launch ramp to rail slide across the bar on that, on that the car. Jeep. The Jeep? Yeah. yeah I mean, like that was the shit that I liked, you know, going big. Oh. And that just stuck with me ever since. And ever since then, those are the type of skaters that I really looked up to that go big, you know? The thing that I always looked at with Nottis and also Tommy uh, Guerrero was their video part showed them at their house coming out and like starting. And that's for some reason it made it more like instead of just trick, 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 it was like you got that was an early time for us to see into someone's life like, oh, that's where they live. You know, like yeah. that was like a big deal for us to see, like not us doing tail slides off his stair, just fucking around in front of his house. Cause that's what we did. We would like Ollie off the curb cut all day and learn one eighties and like get a parking block and slide them down. And, but like just in front of our house as a playground and then seeing these guys, it was like, I mean, not us and gone's obviously too much inspiration, right? Like they're the founding fathers, like of the yeah, street yeah. world. So Wow, that's cool, man. Yeah, um, seeing them, like you said, like you you had more of a real connection with these guys, you know, like showing them coming out their house and stuff is like, these are real people, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. And, and his style, too. I like Nottis' style, you know? Yeah. It's and just back in the day. Yeah, I can see that in your skating. You did a lot of Ollie grabs. Mm -hmm. and, like try to go as big as you can and just hold it and pull it even bigger. And that was kind of <laughs> not not as his shit. Like those yeah. those hips with the fence. This is a classic spot. I don't know where, but he's always blasting and then just wah. Yeah, dude. Yep. That might have been Venice uh high right. school or something. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh so when does um skateboarding kind of become like I don't know if you made a sponsor me tape or if like you met like karma or AP or somebody and they introduced you to like, how do you kind of start thinking of it more than just skating where it's like, whoa, there's an industry and there's like a way to get free shit and there's a way to travel and like opening up your eyes to this whole thing that you became part of. Um, it was definitely moved by Celia and then establishing like um karma and tom knox and these dudes that were already pro and uh i already knew in the back of my head like i want to be pro one day you know what i mean like this is sick these guys that's a dream these guys are getting free skateboards yeah. and then traveling you know like what little kid doesn't want to do that you know what i mean right and so yeah we just visaya is a small town so through the years of skating, like me and Richard, we pushed each other, you know, we pushed we the launch ramp days, you know, we were always trying crazy stuff. And we have these garbage cans 
that we would set up behind the launch ramp and we'd literally like fly over them and stuff. And um, at the time, Karma and Tom Knox were like the two pros. And eventually they kind of took us under their wing, you know, like oh. Karma and Tom would flow boards and eventually, you know, started taking us on trips and stuff. And I think Tom Knox, he really had Richard under his wing and, and I was with Karma and Karma was my homie and okay. Richard's too. You know, he, we were all like, we were all a little crew, but yeah. Tom was like, on another level off to the side, you know, his uh, doing his own thing, but he discovered Richard and like hooked him up with Santa Cruz. And uh, yeah, they started doing big things and I was chilling with karma and we, you know, we did consolidated, but before that karma would give me his old boards and stuff. And was that yeah, like in the Dogtown era? Dogtown era. That was my first sponsor Dogtown. Oh, you got sponsored by him. Yeah, yeah. What, was that when Keith was helping out Cochran? Um, I don't remember Keith being there. I just was with uh, Jim, uh, Jim, Jim Muir. Muir, Red Dog. Okay. So yeah. do you know if it was in SF yet or if it was still in LA? It was in San Francisco. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was So Cardiel, was Cardiel on there? Cardiel was on there. Oh, man. Yeah, Wade Spire, J.J. Rogers. J.J. Rogers, oh, yeah. Yeah, we had the sickest team, but I, I was just an amateur, you know, but we would go, Karma was pro for them and had a board and uh -huh. would go to San Francisco a lot and would take us with them. And that's how like they kind of, Karma specifically and Alan Peterson, they introduced me to the skateboarding world. You know what I mean? Um, from riding on Dogtown and Karma, like hooked me up with uh, Venture Trucks, you know, and I got on Venture and I was, you know, skating with Greg Carroll and then when Keith Cochran, they would hook me up Ventures. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it just kind of took it off from there, you know, myself. So did you, did you meet Wade way before Think, like in that Dogtown era, did you meet Wade? Yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> met Wade. Um we would go up there and, and stay with at his house and stuff and Concord and Walnut Creek. And oh, uh, yeah, was, yeah. Did he have the, the spine ramp in his backyard? That was later. That spine okay. ramp was like at his parents' house. Yeah. But he had his own little crib that Karma used to live with him. And they had a sick little mini ramp in the garage. In the garage. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That was sick back in the day. And man, I learned a lot of stuff on that little mini ramp. <laughs> right. <laughs> That was cool though, but yeah, that was that was the shit back in the day, man. Good times. What do you think it is? Um, I was talking to Karma. I've had Karma on and Freitas. Um, yeah, and uh, we kind of were talking about like a lot. I mean, pretty much most of the you guys that I know that are from your area grew up so well rounded as far as like yeah you're street skaters but you're not afraid to drop in on a ramp and you'll skate ditches i mean you were skateboarders it was like i want to skate everything right and like mm -hmm. it's interesting to me like you you kind of had that mold what do you think it is is it like is there something special about that is some in something influenced you like something that like I don't know. Were you taught at an early age? Like, dude, you got to skate everything. You can't just do a kickflip off a curb. You got to fucking drop in on a vert ramp too and fucking go skate a full pipe. It's the adventure and all that. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Living here in Visalia, it's so flat, the valley here. You know, there's not much terrain. You know, we didn't have hills to bomb or anything like that, but we did have mini ramps. Yeah. So, you know, we'd skate the streets, but then we'd always go skate a mini ramp somewhere. And then at that time, back in the day, the Visalia YMCA had a huge vert ramp, oh, yeah. which was big and really nice, too, man. It was scary as fuck. And I was scared <laughs> to skate that thing. But Richard was really good at it, too, Richard. And we just see Tom and Karma and my other homie, Jamie Gilly. These guys were just floating airs you know what i mean and just going big and they kind of like embedded it into us like you, we skate everything backyard pools ramps street you know we never had to stick to one thing mm. like as if you grew up in a city 
you know, where it's mostly street. Yeah, there might be a mini ramp here and there, but you're like mostly street skater in the big cities. Yeah. Being here, we adapted to everything, you know. Were you guys on a, a bunch of trips to Fresno, like to skate the Vagabond? Because they have so many pools up in that area, and that's not that far from you. Were you skating there much? Um, yeah, we go up there quite a bit. Um, I didn't have a driver's license back then. I was just a youngster, but Dale Blackman, one of my main homies here in Visalia, yeah, he, had his, he had his own little car, you know. We call it the Champ. It's like this little <laughs> orange, you know, orange car it looked like a yugo or something you know yeah we pile in there and we go to fresno all the time skating everything from vagabond to the streets downtown fresno um fresno city college okay yeah so we we did a lot of traveling around in the valley here and all these different little towns hitting up skate spots and stuff okay Mm -hmm. um i want to talk about the beginning of like right before you get onto consolidated and getting onto consolidated and that whole, I mean, that's gotta be an exciting time. Like how does that all like, is there like rumors? Like what's going on? Like how, how do you become a part of that? How early did you know about it? And just all of that. Um, well, Alan and karma, they were riding for SMA yeah. Santa Monica airlines after Dogtown, And so, yeah, they were already, established doing their thing and and out of nowhere they wanted to start consolidated and with steve keenan from santa cruz back Uh then and um i was just an amateur you know i was basically along for the ride but i was doing whatever karma and and these guys were down to do you know like we were our own crew we're all brothers from visalia you know what i mean for sure Yeah. And so when they decided to start Consolidated, I want to say back in 92 with Jason, Jesse, Birdo, Steve Keenan, Corey Chrysler, Mm. um, rest in peace. Corey's the fucking shit, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah, these guys, it was the sickest team ever and the raddest idea. And so they wanted to do Consolidated and they made it happen out of Santa Cruz, out of, I think, Steve Keenan's garage on the cliffs out there. Uh huh. And I was just amateur, you know what I mean? Just getting free boards and getting free trips up there with the guys and stuff. And that's pretty much how it all started for me. Uh huh. Until eventually they turned me pro. I can't remember the year. I want to say 93, you know, just a few years later. Okay. They had turned me pro and gave me a board. Was that a surprise or was it something coming? Like, did did they surprise you with it or did they talk to you about it and kind of work out? Um, It was kind of a surprise. I mean, it wasn't no plans like you're going to be pro for us one day, you know, but we were such a tight little crew that, you know, it was almost a given, you know, once I turned old enough, I guess, because I was pretty young, you know? Yeah. And once they felt like I was worthy enough, yeah, they they gave me a board, man. It was pretty rad. What was the first graphic? You know what? I have it right here. Can I show it to you? But please, yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. So that's the, the first. Yep, yeah, this is the first board I ever came out with. Sick. It was an alien graphic, and the cube, that's the consolidated cube on the brain right there, you know? It says my name up here with the little UFO. And nice. yeah, this is the first one. This is actually a reissue. We reissued it. The very first one was Ever Slick. Remember the plastic on the uh, bottom? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, it was an Ever Slick board on on the first one. Do you remember who made the graphic? I think it was Moish. I well, think I Moish was going to ask. That. Okay, because yeah. was Moish was Moish a part of it from the beginning? As far as I remember, he was. As far okay. as I remember, yeah. But, you know, I, I could be wrong. But as far as I remember, Moish has been there ever since. I know beginning. Jason always talks about Moish and all the influence and like what a rad dude he was. I knew Moish a little bit and uh, I didn't realize him and Jason had such a connection and like all the art that he did and a big part of Consolidate, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, he was. He was. And every time we'd go up there, we would either stay in the Consolidated warehouse, sleep with the or ramp? Like, yeah, we would. Well, the ramp, I don't think, wasn't there yet. 
Okay. This was before then. But we would sleep at Consolidated or we'd stay at Moish's house. Moish would let us crash over there, you know? Sick. So it was cool, man. We met a lot of cool people through him. What was one of the earliest trips you remember that wasn't like just your bros? It was like, whoa, this is probably the Consolidated or Dogtown, like a team, like going somewhere. Oh, man. I think I just barely turned 18. I was still 17. And actually, I had to drop out of high school to go on this trip to <laughs> Europe. We went oh, to Marseille, shit. France with Karma and Alan, and we did a whole European tour. You know, the Euro tickets you can buy for the, the train, you know, we just get a Euro ticket and we went through all the countries, you know, all over Europe. Oh, and man. that was the very first big trip that I remember. And I'll never forget, too. It was sick, man, because this is consolidated, you know. So we're talking zero money. Like, <laughs> literally zero. you know, yeah. I think I might have went with zero. They gave us boards to sell. Right. To make money. And then so is there like we, connections, like meet this guy in this country, meet this guy, like he'll help you mm-hmm. out or stuff. Right. Yeah. Yep, we'd fly it and go to a different country and like some dude would be meeting meeting us there like a local and they would show us all around to all the different spots and stuff. And yeah, it it was the best time, you know. What was the best thing that you remember skating? Like, did you skate under the Eiffel Tower or anything like epic like that you remember like, man? Yeah, it it was actually and, and you hit it, man. It was in Paris and they had this spot you even see it nowadays with these huge ledges coming down and um they had a huge stair set there too it was probably like 13 stairs or something and oh, i remember yeah. kick flipping it back then okay. and uh, and then i even did a no slide on that ledge that goes down in paris you know i don't know the name of the spot uh-huh. But, I know yeah. what you're talking about. There's a double set there too, right? Like yeah, a, the double set. People do lines there and do a trick down the yeah. double set. Yep, yeah, yep. like skating that, you know, and that was definitely one of the highlights of our trip, you know, for me anyways. And and, and of course, Amsterdam, you know what I mean? We go through <laughs> Amsterdam. I was a big weed smoker, you know, so I'll be smoking weed and all these cool spots and shit. It was pretty dope back then, you know? Yeah, crazy. Your eyes are just wide open. I mean, especially like mm-hmm. coming from Visalia to something like that. It's like, wow, big city life and like hanging with your bros and just kind of like even not having a lot of money, you're still just having the options to do whatever you're able to do. Yeah. Yeah, so. we loved it and and it wasn't even about the money at the time. We didn't even care. I mean, mm-hmm. we of course we needed money to eat, you know, yeah. but that was about it. Like we just we survived on the streets. We slept in the tour vans as much as possible. And we did tent city, you know, pop up tents wherever we're at. And we didn't care. We were young and, and free and just having fun. What was uh, your first earliest memory of meeting Andy Roy? And like, what was your first impression? Um, well, I always kind of knew of him. But yeah, when I first when I first heard that he was going to ride for Consolidated with us. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, whoa, we actually because, you know, you got to remember coming from Visalia, a small town. And I'm already close with um, Karma and and Alan because he's from Fresno. So we all feel like family already. But then seeing like a real pro come in that I didn't know, you know what I mean? And want to ride for us. It was like, hell yeah, you know, we're going to fucking do some shit. You know what I mean? And then just seeing how wild and crazy he was, he kind of fit right on in with us, bro. It was sick. I know you guys are like brothers from different mothers, right? Like, especially him Mm -hmm. and Richard, they have a lot of the same energy. Oh, yeah. Big time, man. Between him and Richard, (laughs) it it was fucking excitement everywhere we went, you know? Uh It was crazy. We always had to have our guard up. We didn't know if we were going to get love from people or fight people. You know what I mean? We didn't know what, but yeah, that that was the shit. That was the, what we got into. Um, when I talked to Andy and karma actually brought it up too. there's, um, you got to talk about this ghetto van tour. Apparently Mm -hmm. it's one of the craziest trips you guys have been on. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was honestly, it was a low budget, you know, 
cross country two or three month long tour and we were young and you know our mom she's always been supportive of us since day one you know but she always knew we were in good hands you know being with karma and alan like these guys have our back they're not going to let nothing bad happen to us you know right. yeah and so it was it was definitely a crazy tour man going from shop to shop doing demos you know, having to be there at a certain time just so we can get paid for our demo just to keep going on our trip, you know. And there's no team manager. It's just you skaters, right? Yeah, just us skaters. The team managers stayed at at, at home in the office, you know. Uh -huh. We were communicating with Jason a lot and um, Berto, you know, okay. but those guys stayed behind the scenes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And we were just out on the road doing it up, man. It was sick getting in all kinds of mischief and, you know, having fun, killing demos. You know, everywhere we went, we we skated well because we were all all around skateboarders, you right. know, all of us. So, yeah, everywhere we went, it was destruction. You know what I mean? It was sick. Was there like uh, some, I forget where, maybe a, some city... Uh, could have been called Denver or somewhere where Andy ended up fighting some guy whose girlfriend was in the van with Alan or something like that. It was like something weird, some crazy shit happened. Yeah. Yeah. That was, um, I want to say it was Salt Lake city, Utah. Okay. I want to say it was in Utah and, uh, yeah, we went to some snowboard party <laughs> you know, it was a huge party, but they were all snowboarders, you know what I mean? And they had all their girlfriends there. And and uh, next thing you know, a huge fight breaks out. You know, Richard clocked someone, you know, in, inside the house. They were all pissed. And Andy and Karma, they weren't going to let Richard get jumped. You know what I mean? So, yeah, the next thing you know, the whole house is fighting you know, Andy's out in the front yard fighting Richard and them, and we're all trying to scramble away. And at, and I remember, dude, one of the craziest shits, dude, fucking, I was out there in the van, like not in the van, but outside when all the commotion was happening and karma was running, everyone was running and, and karma opened the van, boom, got his skateboard. And all I seen karma was hiding right beside the van. And here comes some motherfucker running up and karma grip, grip tape side up, you know? Oh yeah. yeah. Right across the face, laid him out, just convulsing. And I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I've seen violence like that with my own eyes at first, you know, I was like, holy fuck, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was nuts, bro. And we, we take off. I was fighting with some other dude down the street. Andy and Doug had to ghetto start the van really quick, like get it started. It was in a cul-de-sac. And so the minute they get it started, they go to make their U-turn. The whole party was out in the middle of the street, like literally <laughs> with, with hockey sticks. And they were all lined up just getting ready to fuck up the van. And Andy just punched it. I was still out in the street down here. Andy punched it woo, right through them like <laughs> Oh. And, and all you hear, you know, I see it just whacking the van, the windows busting, you know, and they stop, get in. Me and Richard hop in the van because we were like fighting some other dude down the street, you know. They wanted to kill us that night, dude. It was crazy. Oh, we got my We got God. away in the van in the neighborhood and we found another cul-de-sac and we parked and hit the lights off and we we're just sitting there hiding and we see the cops going by. <laughs> And at that time, we lost karma. He dipped from the party. You know, he whacked that dude. Um, they were all after him. You know, he was hopping fences, fences, and fences. Oh, man. And we were in Utah with no numbers, no phones. We didn't know how to get a hold of him. And we lost, we lost him all night that night. I think he slept underneath the big rig at like a grocery store or something. Whoa. Yeah, it was crazy, bro. And then Alan, we were all doing our research, talking to Consolidated back at home, trying to find him. We finally connected with him. Oh, because he called back to Consolidated and you, is that what? Was yeah, that yeah. Because oh. there's, there's no cell phones or nothing. Somehow. Nah, nah. Technology wasn't up to par back then, you know? Yeah. So we were just winging it all the time. <laughs> 
It was nuts, dude. It sounds like a scene out of the movie The Warriors, man. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, no, it was literally like that, dude. And we got into all these problems a lot because all these dudes, like their girlfriends were always digging us. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and then, of course, they'd get jealous and hate on us. I think one time these dudes, it might have even been at that party, they loosened our lug nuts on our car. So that way, when we're driving around, the tire would fall off, you know? Right. Like, we always got into crazy shit, man. I don't know if that's the same place, but I always heard this story. Andy always tells me this one. It's a... Uh, Alan Peterson's making out with some girl or having sex. I don't know what they're doing, but he he <laughs> he was quoted yeah. as saying, I bet you never thought you'd see Alan Peterson naked. Like he said it to her. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. fucking legendary. Hey, man, he had his little <laughs> lines, you know, which is, you know, it was cool. That was, that was it back in the day. You know, we always throw little lines just to get some and shit. Hey. It was funny. With a backside really, ollie like his, he can say whatever he wants. <laughs> oh, for sure, man. Alan's a legend, dude. He's one of my favorite skateboarders in the fucking world, man. Yeah. I, I skate a lot. Be how I skate? Because of Alan and Karma, you know? Yeah, you can the see styles, that. You know, the backside ollie, I had to get that down, you know? So next thing you know, I'm on the mini ramps doing huge backside ollies like Alan, you know? Yeah. That yeah. one photo of him at Marseille just blasting the hip backside all like ooh. Uh, that's one of my favorite photos right there. Yeah, absolutely. Have you you keep in contact with him? He's like in New Zealand or Australia now, right? He's in Australia. Australia. Yeah. Yeah. I keep in contact with him, you know. Mm -hmm. We're we're in different time zones. So every once in a while he'll call me and it'll be like eleven at midnight here when it's probably, you know, during the day over there, you know what I mean? So we're on crazy different time schedules, but he definitely keeps in touch with us. You know, that's family right there. Rad. I have, one of, I have one of his boards right here that I always saved. Dale Earnhardt. Oh, um, yeah. He's a big race car uh, fan, right? Yeah, he's a huge race car fan. And, and yeah. so am I. So, you know, growing up here in Visalia, my mom liked NASCAR, so... Yeah, we were big into racing and cars, and mm. I'm a huge car guy in general now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rad, dude. I had a lot of car graphics growing up, you know. Think yeah, like the, the grills and stuff, right? Yeah, the Escalade grill. When, when I got the Cadillac, I had yeah. I had that one done. Greg so. Carroll wanted to do that. That was his idea. Okay. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. It was cool. Uh. Do you got did you get to um spend some time with Jason Jesse in those days like as a youngster? Um not as much as I wish I would have, uh -huh. but definitely we would and we'd see him around. Um I got a crazy story with Jason. Yeah. We went to this uh I think it was called Thrashathon in San Luis San Obispo. San Luis Obispo, yeah. Yep, and we went down there and I was with Karma and Dale, just the whole crew, my brother and stuff. And we were with Jason and Jason had his low rider with him, too. You know, he he always has sick cars, you know, like bombs, you know. Yeah. And um, he had cool shit like Jason was rad, he, his style. But he was also really intimidating to me because I was young, you know. Yeah. And one time, dude, at Thrashathon, I had to set up a new board. And me, I think Karma did, too. We went to jason's car his lowrider which i think he had the tools in i needed a razor blade to cut my grip tape jason had this badass fucking dagger knife you know like this knife that you you don't cut grip tape with this knife you know what i mean <laughs> this thing is special uh -huh. and my dumb ass as a little kid you know i grabbed the knife and i cut my grip tape with his blade you know yeah, <laughs> I remember going back and Jason found his knife. He's like, who the fuck cut grip tape with this? You know, he was <laughs> with this, dude, I was just a little grom, you know, mm. it was crazy. But yeah, we had some good times back then. He he wasn't tripping after that, you know, but that was my mistake using his blade to cut my grip tape, you know, <laughs> totally. And he totally. was really intimidating, you know, back then. Yeah. Nowadays, I he's the main homie, you know. 
I love he's Jason. Such a nice guy. It's crazy. Like if you don't know him, you come up and you're kind of like you're yeah, you're intimidated because of like his ethos and his whole world. And then like you find out like, oh, this motherfucker is the most hospitable dude. He he mm-hmm. takes his shirt off his back and it's like here, like whatever. It's like I'm always tripping. Like, yeah, I'm like, dude, you don't want to give your first skateboard away to this fucking clown. Like, keep your shit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like he's real. Really, yeah. So he, like, he was a real case, man. man. Yeah. Um, I think it was 92. It's it's I think it was the first Thrasher or not Thrasher, but San Francisco contest in the fountains. And afterwards everyone went to Wallenberg. And that mm-hmm. was a huge day for you. You weren't in the contest. I don't think you were pro yet. But you no. went to Wallenberg to get some. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Markovich was hyping it up at the contest. I think he wanted to backside 180 maybe or something. He wanted to try something. And so everyone went there and they had this kind of like a, it was a contest, but it wasn't really organized necessarily. It's more like Thrasher style where it's just Jake probably yelling or whatever. And mm-hmm. you fucking snapped the 180. Yeah. Talk about yeah. that day, dude. That's a big, I mean, you might've been the second market ollied it, but I don't know if anyone else had done anything down it. No, no. Back then, Mark was the only one to ollie it. And I think he did a, a, an ollie grab. It was in the blind video days back, back and then. He uh, rolled in from the fence because there was no curb there yet. Yeah. Yeah. But when you it, guys did it, was there a curb? Because you guys did it like running down the, the, the aisle right you didn't come in the same way no no i think even the gate would might have been closed during that during okay. that little contest um at wallenberg so we just pushed down the alleyway back against the wall you know like literally just <laughs> as far back, back as you can wall, yep, and then just one two two good runs throw your board down get a good like four or five pushes and just launch off that bitch dude it was it was pretty gnarly and there wasn't too many dudes doing it. I mean, it was me. I think Markovich was there. I want to say Mike Vallely, which might sound Maybe. weird to Ollie Wallenberg. Uh, Simon was, Woodstock was on his skim board. That was I. Like, oh yeah, he did it. He ollied the like three two stairs, or, yeah. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mark was the first one to ollie it, and then I was the first one to actually do a m- trick down it, like a frontside one eighty. Right. And it was insane, bro. I was, you know, a and they had like a lot of the audience from the contest. So there was a lot of spectators there. Yeah, there was hundreds of people yeah. to where when I actually made it, I rolled into the crowd and disappeared into the crowd, you know, and they all <laughs> kind of picked me up type of deal. It was gnarly, man. I was all skinned up that day. My elbow was all skinned up and I was going for it, man. I think I was 17 years old. Dude, somebody has to have that on video, right? I they I've got never, it. I've never seen it, but some like Jake Rosenberg or somebody had to have been there filming, I would hope. I know. Maybe if I go back and look at the photo, there's got to be someone with a camera in there. That's what you, you know, yeah. cell, cell phone cameras weren't there back no, then. No. But like people were filming the the contest in the fountain, so they I mean, and Markovich, I I swear that Markovich told Bryce, like, I'm going to like, I think it was a backside 180. I don't know. That seems pretty gnarly. It might've been a kickflip. I'm not sure what he was trying, but. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. I remember but it didn't trying. happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It didn't happen. No, I, I was the one that laid it down that day. And, and I was just an amateur kid. I don't even think too many people even knew who I was. You know, I was did just, Jake, did you know Jake yet? Had you met him yet? Uh, not really. I mean, huh. I, I have heard of him, of course, you know. Yeah. I think after that, from then on, I knew Jake very well, you know. <laughs> Jake had my back. He even nicknamed me Big Guns, Paez, Big Guns. Because, <laughs> you know, everything I do, I was always, you know, skating big, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Gnarly. And so, yeah, he always, he was, that was my nickname. You know, in Thrasher, the teddy awards or whatever where they give you all these awards i think under that like my nickname was big guns paez from jake back then rad dude and it always stuck man and then you guys went to uh where was it ecuador right you went on a trip with him yeah yeah but back to wallenberg really quick yeah no rolling ramp 
Like that was right. You were pushing that was the real deal. That's the way to do the Wallenberg contest straight up. Afterwards, they put the rolling ramp there and it wasn't the same after that. Like, sure, these guys have done gnarly tricks, you know, but yeah, it was with the rolling ramp. You know what I mean? So like they you give those guys credit for doing the gnarly trick down the thing, but it yeah. wasn't really like doing Wallenberg, you know, pushing against the wall. That's some raw shit. You know, I think the rolling yeah. ramp is kind of cheating, you know? Well, yeah, it is for sure. I mean, what happened was Frank kick flipped it and then Diego backside 180 would it. So the kind of the staples were done and it was like, what can be done without the ramp? Like, could someone tray flip it without the ramp? I don't know. Could someone, you know, like all those tricks that happen, like front side flip, uh, backside one, you know, all these different yeah. things. Yeah. So I think, but I think to, to just, explain why that happened though a little bit is probably more so because skateboarding is about abds nobody wants to see some that's already been done so yeah, yeah. how can how really? can we show some new shit and bring like some new shit it was like let's put the ramp in there and then maybe reynolds can front side flip it you know like that mm -hmm. and but there's always the 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 difference between the ones that didn't use the ramp and the ones that did like the pioneers and the guys that fucking did that. It's like, I know mm -hmm. that every time somebody, you know, I've filmed a lot of shit at Wallenberg. I got like probably mm -hmm. like over 10 tricks at least that I've filmed, not even including the contest. And uh, each time I've gone there with like whoever it would be, they'd be like, damn Frank kick flip that without the ramp. You mean Jesse's 180 was without the ramp? Like, how did Diego backside 180 that without the ramp? It's like, yeah, yeah. there's so much respect for the ones that did it without the ramp. Yeah, it's just a different different level of respect, you know? Totally, but yeah, no, I, I feel you, bro. It was cool. Even seeing the shit with the ramp was pretty dope, you know? Like, well, I can't, I can't lie. The energy, like when Chris Cole backside 360'd it, it was like, holy fuck. That's insane, dude. I actually at the next Wallenberg contest, I was at that one too. Uh -huh. And my goal was being the first one to 180 it. I wanted to be the first one to front side 180 flip it. So uh -huh. it was me and Andrew Reynolds going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he met, he landed it before I did. Uh -huh. Much respect to Reynolds. That dude's the boss right there. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was sick, man. After that, I didn't even want to try nothing else anymore. It didn't even matter. You know, I was just like, I'm going to enjoy the rest of the contest now, you know? Well, going back to the first one where you did the 180, do you remember like how many times you had to like, was it a battle or like, how did, how did it happen? I don't think it was a battle. I probably did it maybe within like five or six tries or something like that. I you did. Can't, get for, you up, can't so. toss down that thing too many times. In yeah, ball. that's what I'm saying, dude. <laughs> and and like the way I was falling, I was getting skinned up, so I couldn't have done it that many tries, anyways. But after I landed it, I remember getting the prize, and it oh, was yeah. a it was a bait, it was a hat, and it was just filled with money, random ass phone numbers. Um, <laughs> condoms like a bag of weed like no there was way. just that shit in the hat you know and i was only like 17 years old posing for the photo like <laughs> it was so funny dude who hands that to you was that from jake or who who gave it to you it could have been jake i have no idea though it, okay like, it was so long ago man okay um well then let's catch up to um the end of Consolidated, what kind of happens with you leaving there? I met you probably shortly after that when you got on Think, but um, I never really heard like exactly like looking back at that from this. I mean, I'm sure at the time your thoughts were probably a lot different than they are now. Um, but looking back and stuff like what was the reasoning? What happened? Like, I'm pretty sure Keenan just kicked you off maybe or something like that yeah um the story's out there a little bit for sure um they talked about it on uh andy's documentary on viceland oh, yeah. and it was pretty much spot on on that like i was having a kid at the time and steve keenan who owned consolidated 
from what I hear was basically like Jesse has a kid. He's not going to skate that much anymore. Just assumptions, you know, just assuming all this shit. Cause I was the first one to have a kid out of all the guys. Uh -huh. And so he kicked me off after that. It's like, Jesse needs to find another sponsor, you know? And I was devastated, you know, at that time, I'm still pretty young. You know, I was, I was in tears. You know what I mean? I did go to he the do homies. it face to face or call you or how, how did he no, do it? It wasn't face to face. It was just like an over the phone thing. I think we were even on tour somewhere. We were somewhere else. Oh. Yeah. We were gone in the van and um, I opened the van, you know, and Richard and Andy were in there and I was like, bro, I just got kicked off of consolidated. And they're like, what the fuck? Like no one even knew why there wasn't a real reason. Well, apparently now the reason he's trying to say is that he knew that I was going to do bigger and better things if I left, that they couldn't take care of me, which is f bullshit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like who, who says uh, he that? Did it, you know? He did it for your own good. Yeah, he did it. That was his <laughs> excuse, you know? I mean, yeah. little did he know part of that was true because when I left and I got on Think Skateboards, then I started making real money. And I, yeah. and I started kind of doing well after that you know sure but you're also like this is your roots and this is your family and this is your hometown like this is your brother your literal brother richard yeah, literal, and then literally. your bros karma ap like your fucking crew like so that's i mean you were devastated right yeah yeah i couldn't even believe that happened who kicks you out of your own we started the company Right. Like, you know what I mean? We were the writers, you know? Yeah. How are you going to kick one of the guys off from day one? I didn't do nothing wrong. There was nothing wrong that I did, you know? Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, so I think everyone was pretty pissed off after that. And and I want to say Consolidated went downhill after that, bro. After you don't break up a family and expect everyone to just continue on being happy, you know? So what happened? I didn't pay super close attention to specifics, but obviously Jason left. Karma's eventually gone. Like AP kind of was probably one of the last men standing. I think he wrote it out for a while, but, and your brother, did he be, like, how did it go down? Did people, when did Keenan leave? Cause pretty soon it's just Birdo and Letitia running it. Yeah. yeah afterwards. Um, after, like, honestly, bro, after I got kicked off of Consolidated the first time, I never paid no attention to them after that. I was already wow. on my own thing, bro. I'm okay. writing for Think. I got completely different sponsors than all the guys, you know? So I was off on my own mission after that. So I don't really know, but they still had their little crew. That's when Scott Bourne came about and okay. a couple of these other guys. They, I wasn't riding for them when they were on, you know, so they still mm. did their own thing for a while. I, I don't know. Consolidated was always doing negative shit, you know, trying to bring other people down, doing all their negative ads about, you know, they're just a hating company on everyone else, you know, mm. and that wasn't my vibe. I, I couldn't even roll with that anyways. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, later it just became an anti-Nike campaign. Like it, it was like we don't even have a team, but we're we're just putting ads out that talk shit on Nike, and it was like, yeah, oh, heavy. Yeah. Uh, well, how long between that moment where um, you get told that you're not on consult anymore till think and like how did that happen? It wasn't long after I got kicked off of Consolidated. I just want to say within within months, maybe even sooner, I had gotten a call from uh, I was riding for Venture Trucks. At oh, okay, the so they the knew. Time. Yep. So they already knew. And then I got a call from Keith Cochran one day, and he's like, "Jesse, you know, we want you on Think." And I was like, "What?" Like. Hell yeah, you know? So he bought me a plane ticket to San Francisco and I hopped on the plane from Fresno to there. Keith and Greg Carroll picked me up at the airport. I think they dropped me off at um, Dan Hobel's house. 
So I instantly clicked with Drahobo and Matt Pales. I think they were oh. actually living together at the time. Yeah, on 14th. Yep. Yeah. So actually, on my first trip up to San Francisco, riding for Think, I started staying with those guys right away. Oh, sick. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fuck. And that's, I mean, I don't know, 97 ish or earlier? 90, yep, 97. Okay, because it was nice. right before Phil died, right? You got on Think. Phil was still on when you got on. Yeah, Phil was still on. Yeah, okay. he was part of our team. I yeah, just remember we that me and Poncho and maybe McKenny, I can't, I think there was one other person. We drove down to Hanford because I was filming for Think, and they're like, hey, you got to go down and film with Jesse. He rips. And I had never met you. And that first day, I was just like, Holy fuck. You're like backside 360 and every time doing the front side flip over the hip on the pyramid. And mm -hmm. Poncho even got the ad, I think, that day on the sunset. Like, yeah. And, then, and we would just drive down to hang out with you. Like, no problem. We're like, oh, we're going to go meet him in Madeira. We're going to go to Fresno. We're going to go to Hanford. And like Visalia, I, I was telling Freitas this. I was like, I've never walked into Visalia where it wasn't just like everybody ear to ear hyped to see you open arms. Like the hospitality has always been felt Dale, Tim Garner, whoever was with Richard and you, like we always had a good time. Jake Nunn and we'd come down there a lot Ooh. with. And yeah, yeah, Jake. it was just, it was dude, that was like when I was super young and like kind of intimidated by everything too and just like wow this is rad i mean mm -hmm. that indoor park was it madeira i think yeah it was that, uh, madeira we they stayed had, that in the rain with you all the time and you just fucking went ballistic all over the place and they had that bowl and poncho would nolly flip i guess yeah yeah that was sick man yeah one thing about with myself growing up skating lawn tramps once all the skate parks started coming about, I fell in love with skate parks too, you know? Yeah. I don't necessarily call myself a skate park skater, but I love skate parks, you know? Uh -huh. And then that, that's what got me into the contest scene is uh -oh. I loved skating contests. I really like tacos. A lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people hated on it. Mm. I actually loved skating contests, you know? I felt like I was good at it because yeah, I grew you, up you. skating all these skate parks and stuff, you know? Well, you were good at it and you were consistent. That's what like, I mean, a big part of skiing contests is staying on. Right. And you yeah. had your shit and you could do it like tray flip. Got it. Front side flip. Got it. Back 360. Got it. And it was like, that. that's just fucking now where are the obstacles? Now, what do I got to like get a little sauce yeah, on? And for so, sure, man. Yeah. Every time Greg Carroll because he was our team manager, it would be like, this contest, this, these contests are coming up. Do you guys want to go? I was the first one to be like, fuck yeah, <laughs> Bro, we're rolling, you know? So we get the crew, you know, and, and we'd always hit up all as many contests as I can. What was the best you ever did? Was there any, did you win any or get top three or? I had one, I got first place in one contest. No. And it was in 1999 in Anaheim. It was called the Invert Games in Whoa. Anaheim in a convention center. Uh -huh. It was like a, it was like a trade show atmosphere. You know, it was like a trade show going on in Anaheim. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, man, I remember. Check this out, bro. They had a mechanical bull there. So like in the contest, <laughs> if you didn't if you didn't make the finals in the contest, bro, yeah, you had a chance to battle it out on this mechanical bull. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, dude, I didn't even make it to the finals, but I had a chance to ride that bull. And so does Steve Caballero. I tried pot <laughs> and it was me and Steve Cab, bro. And we we're the ones that won. Like we did it the longest on the mechanical bull. Damn. And so because I won on that bowl, it took me into the finals and I ended up winning the whole damn contest. Right. Holy yeah. So shit. it was cool, man. I think damn grand prize back then was only like three grand, mm -hmm. but still like that was a lot to me, you know, I'd be like, yeah, I was having fun that night. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. I always remember, um, I think it's Huntington Beach, some some fucking SoCal city on the coast. I, I believe it was Huntington. Uh, there was a vert contest. I think it was the one where Trujillo bonelessed out of the stands into the ramp. 
Yeah. But it was me, you, and Richard, and maybe Poncho or somebody else were eating dinner, and we come out of the restaurant. And these fucking jocks were heckling us and like, I don't oh, know, yeah. giving us shit. And I didn't know Richard that well yet. And Richard turns around and he, Richard's a small guy. And these are all big dudes. And Richard just got in there like five dudes at least faces was like, what? And just fucking I was like, oh, shit, we're going to fight right now. And everyone mm -hmm. backed down to Richard because he came I in remember, with that. Bro. And I always remember that story. I was like, dude, Richard is a gnarly motherfucker. You got into a lot of shit with Rich. He, <laughs> at that, that time, what you're talking about, I remember it was out in front of the restaurant and there were some big motherfuckers. And Richard was like, I want the biggest motherfucker <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah. Like Richard wasn't afraid of no one, you know? And, yeah. you know, he was little, yeah. but he packed a fucking punch, man. He has some power, you know? Uh -huh. So there were plenty of times where he would call out the biggest dude there. <laughs> literally lay him out just put him to sleep bam you know yeah it was crazy dude i have a i have a few richard stories that are pretty gnarly you know yeah i'm sure he uh he's been through some fucking gnarly shit i mean we just kicked it in sacto and uh it was good to see you guys but uh mm -hmm. and i was a little intimidated to ask him but something happened with his eye right yeah he he lost his eye like it's still there but he's in a see glass it. eye or a Okay. No, nah, it's there. It just turned white on him. Like the whole pupil and all that's not really there anymore. Right. What what happened was he was riding home on his low rider bike. He has a sick ass little gangster low rider bike. Yeah. It was like one in the morning and he was riding home to my mom's house. And, you know, Visalia, people are bored here there's some corny ass like young gangsters here you know that think they're hard and shit well they hit him up one night when he was driving they're just youngsters and oh. they're like hey fool where are you from and i think richard richard said i'm from nowhere because i think at the time he was just staying in my mom's house so and he was drunk so you know he's like i'm from nowhere and for no reason these fools turn around in their car and chased after him. He tried getting out of there, but they caught him. And one dude had stabbed him in the head, and then oh. another, and, and then they stabbed him in the eye, but like not directly in the eye. It like just kind of skinned his cornea or whatever it's called, you know, his eyeball. Uh huh. And yeah, he was pretty fucked up, dude. He was scared for his life. I remember he was telling me he got away from the dudes though, and he made it to my mom's house. And he was all bloody, banging on my mom's door. My mom opened it up and let him Ooh. in. And she was freaked out, you know, like freaking out. Yeah. You know, because they didn't know what was going to happen, if he was going to die or what, because he's bleeding everywhere, got stabbed. And the first thing my mom did was call Dale Blackman, one of our main homies, because he was dating this chick who's like a nurse. Oh. So he calls them up right away. They go over to my mom's house and kind of bandage him up and take care of him and Nice. Yeah, man, it was pretty gnarly, dude. Fuck, dude. Oh, man. Yeah, so ever since then, he hasn't been skating that much. He's been off doing other stuff, you know? He builds these pretty cool lowrider custom bikes. Right. And um, currently right now, he's working, man. He's working for um, this other dude we know who owns a car collision repair place. Okay. So he's doing auto bonding and sanding and fixing cars with them and stuff. So it's cool, man. He's staying busy doing his thing. Big shout out to Rich. I love yeah, you. Shout out. It's Rich. You know, we you, we saw you in Sacramento not too long ago. His personality is so. There, yeah. It's, a, it's all love for skateboarding. You know, it's in our blood. That's what we do straight up, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's so apparent when I hang out with you guys. It feels like the rawness and like the shit that drew me to this in the beginning. Like, you know, like now skateboarding is a little different and we all evolve. Everything changes, all that shit. Let's just be honest. But when you come in contact with like that magical thing that it is that like as a kid you saw, that's a little different from what's going on now, maybe. But like 
you can relate to those people and you just want to high five the fuck out of them because you're like, mm-hmm. God, not everybody understands, but you do, you know, like, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that's it's fucking crazy. forever, dude. Richard's got that Nolly cover. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure what came out first. You had the cover of Big Brother. Yeah, I had the cover of Big Brother. That was in 98. Okay. And was Richard yeah. before that? Yeah, I actually have it right here. Check it out. So um, you got the cover. Oh, yeah. Is that Indian School Ditch in New Mexico? Where, where is it? Yeah, it was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It, yeah. And, uh, yep, it was one of those famous ditches out there that everyone skates. Right. Dude, uh, six, six sky in the background. Dennis McGrath took this photo. It was me nice. and Poncho Moeller out there with Dennis, and we were on our own little tour, just us. Oh, it was shit. cool, man. Yeah, we did a lot of crazy stuff out there. We hooked up with Steve-O and a couple of guys and um, party with them. What's that one guy's name? The buff dude, Rocky? Rocky, yeah. We've seen him out there. Yeah. Yeah. And and Steve-O was doing his crazy shit back then, you know? Yeah. He did this, like, gainer off a three-story apartment building (laughs) into the shallow end. I swear it was only, like, three to five feet. And he just knows how to hit the water and and skim the bottom. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, we got to experience some crazy Steve-O shit when we were out there. Balancing bottle rockets on his nose, like, letting them fly off. You know, it was crazy. I was there. Oh, man. Well, you said it. um, Think definitely that era you you exploded and you your career took off your Airwalk, you're getting an Escalade. You're fucking Jesse Escalade, man. Driving around with that. <laughs> like you and Muska had the same car and shit. It was like mm-hmm. so sick. What sticks out to you back then? I mean, as far as travel, what was one of the best trips during the Think era? Man, with Think, I mean, that's a hard one because we literally traveled all a the lot. time. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. So it's hard to pinpoint what would be my favorite Uh, but um man i could tell you like we went to rome italy yeah and danny fuenzalita danny was with us yeah so me and danny we were like we clicked you know we smoke a lot of herb together you know so it was just like we were you know me danny and poncho Anytime we travel, we always made sure us three were in a bedroom together. You know, we shared the room because we were the smokers. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. So yeah, we had to hot box every fucking room and we just went Just laughs all before. night with Poncho. Laughs, <laughs> fucking skating all night, like just good times, man. Hell it yeah! Was cool. Another good trip was Seoul, Korea. We oh, we went with with um, McKenny, right? With McKenny. <laughs> Oh, and he and missed the he flight. Got stranded there, bro. Yeah, he got stranded there. He had to come home later. That was a trip. The uh, Lance Dawes was with us. Ah, and uh, Greg Carroll, Phil was with us. Dan Travolta. Oh, damn. And we did some really cool stuff out there, man. Just experiencing the culture. You know what I mean? Eating their food. Yeah, McKenny said he ate dog. I remember he was like, I ate dog. Yeah, he, was yeah dude, he came back and told us all about it and shit. We're <laughs> like, damn, well, you're crazy. And he was crazy. He was off. <laughs> he would leave on his own missions by himself. Yeah. He'd come home, and We were staying at a hostel back then, you know? Mm. And it's funny because they thought only Americans eat donuts for breakfast and pizza or hamburger at night for dinner. That's what they thought Americans only ate. So <laughs> we were eating donuts and burgers at night, you know, unless we were trying their stuff, you know, but sure. It was fun, dude. What, what did Phil leave up with you? Like, what would you say to somebody that never really knew Phil that like you experienced from like spending time with him? I mean, he obviously, I always say like Phil was my karma, Alan Peterson for you. Like, I would be nowhere without Phil. He opened up a lot of doors for me to get in. He introduced me to Jake. He introduced me to Greg Carroll. Like all these things that I've been able to do was 100% because of Phil. And Mm -hmm. a lot of times people say he was the best. He was just such a good skater and had his head on properly. 
I was just fortunate to grow up with him. So he just seemed like Phil to me. But like from an outside perspective, what would you say? Like when you met him and got to hang out with him, what were some things that like really stood with you about who he was? Um, first of all, he was the nicest person ever. Like he always had a smile on his face. I don't think I ever seen him mad or mm -hmm. angry. So like just his his personality, his vibe uh, from being so genuine and and nice to me, like he was so cool meeting me and not even knowing me, but took me in as family right away because we all rode for the same company. And like Alan and Karma were to me as far as being an all around skateboarder and embedding that in me, when I got on to think, that's what Phil was to me because we, he wasn't just a street skater or a vert skater. The dude ripped everything we went yeah. to. All and that's what I love, you know what I mean? So if we go to some crazy hard obstacle, it was like always me and Phil, you know, and, and Drahobo, you know, these guys were all around ATVs, you know what I mean? And that was a huge motivation to me on like, how I skate, you know, and shit that I do, you know, and these guys, yeah, they're just positive vibes, you know, it was rad, man. And when he passed away, we were all devastated, bro. Yeah, we were, we were on a trip somewhere when we got the phone call and Greg was with us. We were all in the van and yeah, especially Greg, because he was really tight with Phil, you know? Yeah. And it was heartbreaking, bro. We couldn't believe it, man. And he actually should have been with us on our trip. But mm -hmm. for some reason, he stayed back hanging with some chick or something, you know, mm -hmm. when the car accident happened, you know. But yeah, yeah it, it broke all of our hearts, man. It's devastating. For sure. I'll I'll never forget the day Zawanich came over and me and him just cried on the front porch and just I couldn't like I was like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. This is this is a lie. This isn't real. Like it was the first guy I lost that wasn't family, you know, like it was like whoa dude i mean so young and so gifted he had just i think he had just finished berkeley or was just about to like hit jake mm -hmm. wanted to make him the editor after jake like he had so much ahead of him and it was just taken and it was just like that was a lesson for me i mean we've lost a lot since then but like phil was probably the first it was and mckenny will remind me all the time he's just like every time everything's about phil you know like yeah Fuck, that's tough were you on the team when they went to montreal and there was like a demo or something and all i remember is there's footage of like two quarter pipes and a balcony and they're going quarter pipe on the wall right at the balcony of back in i think it's montreal yeah, yeah it was montreal that's and, the um, sickest footage because it's like drahobo i think you phil dude. maybe pales I, I forget who's all there but it's epic yeah, no, it was a sick ass trip, dude. It was um I want to call it Rampage 98 or something. Like that was the contest, you know. It was in some like it looked like a Taj Mahal, you yeah. know, the Taj, like Indian like style palace, you know. Yeah. It was sick, dude. Yeah, that was good times. Wade was there. Oh yeah, Wade. Andy Fuck. Roy was there. <laughs> yeah. It was sick, bro. I had a good 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 session at that with all those dudes, you know. Yeah. And, and they had a big old, like, I call it snowboard jump, you know, like oh, big yeah. ramp to a, a bank landing, you know, and that was my shit back in the day too. You know, I'd be doing big backside 360 tail grabs and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. That was a good contest back then, man. Sick. And then McKenny wanted me to ask you if you remembered, he said he woke you up in the middle of the night. He was dreaming that you won Tampa. You guys were in Tampa and he thought you won in his dream and he woke up. He's like, yeah, Jesse, you won. And you're, it was like two in the morning. You're like, whoa, dude, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was Tim for sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tim was the best dude ever, man. He he was part of our crew too, obviously, you know, with, with Danny and, and Poncho, because we were all weed heads, you know. But uh -huh. he was the highlight of all of our trips, man. Yep. Such it, a it was, character. Was, he had to, yeah, I wouldn't even go on a trip unless Tim was coming with us, you know. Like Tim was the shit. He he would sing in the van, you know. I remember uh what's that? 
chick Portishead or something would come on and he'd be like, <laughs> I don't want to lose. <laughs> like he'd be getting all into it, dude. It was sick, man. Oh, yeah. He was uh, a hype man for sure. He's and still he's the same ripped. to this day. Yeah. I know. Whenever I watch your guys' stuff, you know, I'm like, yep, that's Tim right there. Right. That's cool. He's a legend, dude. I love Tim. So it was like the biggest moment for you kind of like through Airwalk era. Was that like when you got the Escalade and you're making the most money? Is that around that era? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I want to say so. I was riding for Duff's Shoes, I think, first. And um, our team manager at the time, Rob Dotson. Yep. He went to Airwalk and then, I don't know, I got a call. It was like, hey, we want you to ride for Airwalk but we're going to give you your own shoe too. And at the time, uh, Karma and Alan and them were riding for Vans. They had their Vans shoe deal going on. They had like five dudes coming out with a shoe at one time, like mm. one shoe, you know, some project they were doing, you know? And I was like, man, do I try to like just ride for Vans or, or ride for Airwalk, which no one even knows, but they offered me my own shoe. Of course, I took the shoe deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, yeah, I signed this big contract with Airwalk for, it was like a four-year deal. Four years. Four years, yeah. Making like, I don't know, it was like four grand a month plus shoe royalties at that Damn. time. Oh, so, man. yeah. And then that was just the shoe money. You know, then I'm making think money, contest money, little sponsors, you know, and um that's when the whole fucking Escalade came about, you know? Dude. It was funny, bro. I, I literally skated to the dealership in Visalia. And uh, I was the first one to have an Escalade in the city of Visalia. So I skate down there and I have 10 grand in my pocket and I'm just <laughs> skateboarding to the fucking dealership. And I'm looking in the window. I skated, so I got my skateboard in my hand and I'm looking in the car like this. And the dude comes out kind of rude, like, hey, don't touch the car, you know? Those, those things are expensive. And I, out of nowhere, I'm just like, I want to buy this thing right here, <laughs> straight up. Yeah, they didn't believe me. So I, they took me in the office. I dropped down the money, and they're just tripping. Like, some young skater kid in his 20s rolls up and buys the Escalade, you know? Ooh. But it was cool. Like, I grew up poor, you know? We grew uh -huh. up on food stamps. And so once I got a little bit of money... I, being a skateboarder, you travel a lot. I needed a vehicle. You know, first thing I'm going to do is buy something nice. And yeah. I bought me a Cadillac. That's what I always say is I need a good car and a good bed. Like that's what I spend most of my time in is like, you're either driving or you're sleeping or, you know, like, you know, those that's are, true. you need to be comfortable, especially when you get older, like your back starts getting jacked and to be in that nice comfortable car you don't mind driving to sf from visalia you're like it'll be cool not yeah not at all and i was doing it all the time bro. I was <laughs> yeah. me everywhere okay and then airwalk kind of goes air whack and they fucking it's sell hurt. out to like thrifties or walmart or somebody right like yeah some some dude from japan as far as i know he came in and bought the company they got rid of all the pros except Andy yeah. McDonald. Okay. And so they keep Andy McDonald. They sign some fucking pay less shoe store deal. Pay, le pay less. And, okay. and then next thing you know, Airwalks are only sold in pay less shoe stores, you know, and, and they got rid of the whole team. So yeah, I didn't have a shoe sponsor after that. And a matter of fact, I've never gotten a shoe sponsor after that still to this day. Oh, wow. Yeah. After Airwalk, um, my career started kind of going downhill a little bit. I just started losing sponsors and yeah, I don't know. It's pretty that, crazy. It, it was all around the same time. Yeah. After Airwalk, um, got done. And then before you know it, the next phone call was from Greg Carroll and I'll never forget it, bro. I was devastated. I was in the Escalade. I was at a music store buying some CDs. My phone rings and it was Greg. And he's like, hey, bro, he's like, I hate to say this, but it's time for Jesse Pius to look for another sponsor. And I was like, another one that hit blindsided me out of nowhere. Whoa. Like, why? Like, what the fuck? What did I do? And and he said, because uh, I didn't want to move to San Francisco. 
Okay. I, I, I'm from Visalia. I, I got where I was at from living in Visalia, you know, so I felt like I didn't have to move there. I could still make shit happen from wherever I'm at. Yeah. And so, yeah, bro, I got bounced off the team. It, it was a bummer deal. Next thing you know, I hit up Consolidated again and I gave them a second chance. Oh. And so, yeah, I started writing for Consolidated for a minute. What was that like? Like, how, how are you like, fuck? Or I mean, like, did you have to talk about the past at all? Or did you just say, hey, bygones be bygones, water under the bridge? Like, how did yep. that happen? Bygones, yeah, just let let the past roll. And let's just try this again, like as if it never even happened. But well, then Keenan, you think- Keenan's gone, right? For part yeah. two. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just Berto and Letitia. Okay. which was easier to work with anyways. But you got to remember at the time, I'm used to I'm used to making money from skateboarding. You know, Think was taking good care of me and sure. I was in contests. I love traveling to contests. And Consolidated was like, we don't got no money for you. We'll pay you board sales, which was pretty much nothing. And uh, it, nothing, you know what I mean? So I just thought about it and it, it just wasn't a, it wasn't a good deal for me, man. Like I'm the loyalist motherfucker when it came to all my sponsors, but the minute I felt like I was getting the short end of the stick, you know, I just had to bounce, you know? And I think that was probably part of why I disappeared for quite a few years, you know, out of the skate scene, even though I was still skating, I wasn't putting myself out there. I wasn't in the magazines. I wasn't traveling. I wasn't, there was a good period, you know, like five years or more where I just disappeared, you know? Is this um, kind of coinciding with you becoming a father? Like, are you, cause I know you had a child early on. Is that like maybe part of it too? Is that like your life got a little more complicated? It couldn't just be skateboarding? No, I, I wouldn't say so. No. no. Okay. No. But, but being a family, like I stepped up as a man and I took care of my family, which means if I wasn't going to make the money skateboarding, I'm going to go get a good job and make yeah. it elsewhere to take care of my family. And of course, skating's in our blood. So I just work around my work schedule and skate on my days off and stuff, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I got into truck driving, you know, and I started, I've been trucking for a long time now, you know, so okay. making and great money taking I, care of my family i love the fucking uh news clip of you uh during covid is so <laughs> sick dude jesse pie is on highway five he's delivering milk to like people that can't get it during the covid it's locked down but jesse's gotta get him it is it's so yeah rad. that was funny dude yeah good morning america good morning they hit me up bro yeah and i had my own segment segment on there and I was the truck driver representing California during the COVID times. Mm. And they would ask me, you know, while everyone's at home being safe, how come you're out there putting your life on the line, you know, during this pandemic working? And I just kind of had to explain to them why I'm doing it. And I haul milk for a living, you know, so milk don't stop. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, yeah, I, that's why I just stayed out there trucking, making my money, you know, not worrying about the COVID or nothing. So it's funny. I was thinking about this today before we started talking and I was like, cause uh, my wife and I just drove to San Diego and back and I've driven the five more than anything I've done. Probably like this. Uh, I know that drive. And uh, ever since I've been kind of young and like the first times when I'm behind the wheel, Koalinga was like very known, right? I'm like, damn, yeah. wait till we get to Koalinga. It's going to smell. There's going to be a million cows everywhere. Is that where the dairy is? Um, yeah, we have in California in the Central Valley right here, we got the most dairies basically in the United States. You know, there's like over 250 dairies here in the Valley. Oh, okay. And so, yeah. So, yeah, it's just tons of cows everywhere. You know, and, and and yeah, I'd have I'd go to different dairies and pick up my load of milk and take it to the milk plant, uh-huh. which then they would process it into cheese, milk, ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. See, have you ever milked a cow? 
No, I never <laughs> No, I never got to milk the cow, man. I, I let the milkers do that. You know, that's a dirty job, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I just had to load it up from the tank to my milk tanker on the big rig, you know, which is just hooking up hoses, um, taking the sample because, you know, milk spoils, uh, you know, above 45 degrees, bacteria grows. Right. So, before you load the milk, you know, there's certain procedures you got to take, you know, by checking the temperature, you know, checking the gallons and mm. yeah, it is cool, man. I love doing it. That's really cool. Um, people people say the cows smell and shit when you go through that area, it smells really bad, but to me, it smells like money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I was thinking about like a lot of the shit that you've done that stood out to me. And there's one thing in particular that I filmed and it's a photo that was in the mag that people I remember for years would be like, where the fuck is that handrail that Jesse's 50 50? And it's this really big rail in Daly City. And it, there's a lawn at the top and we had to put the wood down. But mm -hmm. uh, do you remember that? I remember it plain as day. I sure do, man. <laughs> is that is that one of the bigger things that stands out to you? I was trying to think of like, because you've done a lot of shit, obviously. There's there's this tour you guys went on. I think it was in Vancouver where you fucking either board slid or 50 this rail in the street that's like really long too. But you were you were a fucking early rail chomper. Yeah, I've always loved the rails. One of my favorite skate videos of all time is the Plan B video, Questionable, oh, Pat yeah. Duffy. Yeah. So once Pat Duffy, once Pat got on the scene, bro, I mean, I already looked up to him, you know, like, because I'm, I'm a handrail dude, you know, so that's yeah. what set it off for me is watching Pat's part. Nobody did Johnny Cash like us, not even Johnny Cash, man. You know, I'm hitting every handrail in sight, literally. Like, I can, I'll hit every rail. It didn't matter how big, small, long, whatever. Uh -huh. But yeah, once Pat got on the team, Pat rode for Think Skateboards with us for sure for quite a few years. Yeah. And I remember, dude, you and Greg, you guys took us to that rail, and Pat was with us. Uh -huh. And it was just me and Pat trying it, trying it, trying it. And I ended up landing it, man. It was definitely one of the highlights of my career because it was, not only a long rail, I think it was like, what, That's 26? Steep. Yeah. It was steep, and it was tall to get on. It wasn't a small ollie. Like, yeah. it was a big ollie, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, dude, I, I think I surprised myself on that one. Because when we're when you come off of that rail, remember when I eat shit, too? <laughs> I, I, I would literally slide on the ground for days, you know? Like, when you eat shit, you eat shit, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I... I it was crazy. Um, that kind of brought up to me the 50-50 um, that was heard all around the world, which was Ryan Johnson in Fresno on that curved one. Yeah. That was that, legendary when that one came out. That was like the biggest shit for, at that time. Yeah. And, and I think it still is gnarly, dude. I mean, <laughs> the there, it's like City Hall or something in Fresno. Yeah. I've always looked at it and wanted to grind it. It was that weird metal, though. It was like aluminum style metal. So it's kind of sticky. Soft. Yeah. Yeah. It was soft and sticky. And, uh, but I, it was always a bust. But Ryan lives up there, you know? And yeah, when he busted that, I was like, yeah, someone did it, you know? Ryan Johnson is sick, dude. He, he's definitely a rail guy, too. Is he still around? I don't know. I yeah, haven't man. seen him, bro. I, I don't even know where he's at. Yeah. Yeah. What was the city he grew up? Was it Cor not Corvallis? Sanger. 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 Yeah. yeah. I remember we went to his house and his backyard was just a whole field. We were like, whoa, shit is trippy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. RJ. We call him RJ. RJ. Yeah. <laughs> McKetty just goes, so rad. So rad. Everything's rad. Yeah. RJ's yeah. rad. <laughs> He's cool, man. Nice, nice guy. Okay, here's the thing from my perspective. You took a hiatus and I didn't see you on the scene, but I know you're still skating because when you come back on, all of a sudden Jesse Piaz has arrived on Instagram in my world. And the first couple of clips are like you hadn't like you look like you were still 
doing the same exact shit. I'm like, oh, he probably didn't stop skating. He just wasn't sponsored or shooting photos and whatnot. But like, here's the fucking big front side flip. Here's and then Freitas is out with you shoot photos. I was like, the homies back together. This is forever. I love it. Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, never stop skating. I mean, been skating the whole time. But yeah, once I got on the scene again, I wanted to reconnect with my with my main homies, you know, and start from there. Mm. And at the time, Andy Roy was doing his own podcast, Rip Ride Podcast. Check. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so he hooked me up, dude. I went down there and did an episode with him. And from there, it got me psyched to just want to get out there again. But I always felt like, <clears throat> like, I don't know, like no one gave a shit, you know, about me. It's, it's like weird. I don't. It's hard to explain, you know. But once I started, like, getting noticed again, that feeling came back to me. Where it's like, fuck, I, I am somebody, you know. I always mm -hmm. felt like I was nobody, you know, because of where I'm at and stuff. But, mm. yeah, dude, it, it just it threw it lit a fire under my ass you know it's like and then i would hear it from people too like you still got it you still got it this yeah. type of shit you know what i mean and then i'd be like fuck i i do still got it what am i doing i should be out here skating every fucking day you know yeah yeah so i just started making more trips started hooking up with andy all the time you go karma was gone you know already. yeah karma has gone alan's gone all the homies are gone and older so I just had to like reach out, you know, to wherever I can. And yeah, dude, it, it lit a fire under my ass, man. Then we started making plans and doing these big things. And I hooked up with Jason Jesse and uh, he's got his own company, the Driven Skateboards. Yep. And Andy was already part of that. And so once me and Andy started clicking and, and became main homies, you know, it was a no brainer is I'm going to call Jason next and be like, Hey, I need, I need a sponsor. I need boards or whatever. Like uh -huh. let's do this. And he welcomed me with open arms, man. Right. Jason's family. He's got our yeah. back. You know, he, he loves me and Richard, you know, Fuck yeah. he's always taking care of us and yeah, dude. So I was stoked, man. Now I'm always just, I'm representing the driven and I'll be having a board coming out here pretty soon. And, Thing. Yeah, we, we got plans in the works, man. One of my good buddies, Carlos Carrasco from Save Soul Skate Bowls up there in, um, I want to say Stockton area. Stop. Uh huh. Man, he does good things for the community all the time. You know, he's giving away boards, doing all this positive stuff for the kids. Oh. And he helped out Jason a lot. And so he's been helping me out, too. You know, we've been, I've been taking trips up north. Remember we saw you up in Sacramento on that trip? It was an epic day, dude. That I was, was going to say, dude. like going to meet Ricky Windsor and hanging out with yeah. all his motorcycles and Richard, me, you, Jason. It was a great day. Great day. Good stories, man. We were laughing so hard, like <laughs> yeah. the whole entire time, you know? Yeah. And Carlos set all that up for us. We went to Woodward Skate Camp up there in Tahoe. Oh. And we did a huge demo up there and hung out with the kids. And Fuck, I got to get up there. I haven't been there yet. Dude, it's so it rad. fun. Man. Yeah, it's so fun. It's like no other skate park in the world because you're up in the mountains and mm. they have these little paths that go in between the trees, you know? Yeah. So it's like some like Ewok type <laughs> Star Wars shit. You know what I mean? You're just like shoo, jamming through the trees and stuff. And yeah, it was super cool. Oh, dude, that rips. Yeah, man. So we got plans in the works, man. We're doing uh, skateboards with Jason and, you know, we plan on doing a little traveling and it's cool, man. Those those guys are the main homies right now. Andy and Jason, that's, that's my little team, you know? Good dudes. I fucking love them. And it's cool. Like when you get to like go full circle like that, like I saw that you were skating with Jeremy Ray and Chinita and I was like, dude, that's like a time machine warp, like back to like 2005 yeah. or something. Yeah. Like, so 411 video magazine type shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was cool, dude. I, I moved to LA for a little while. I lived in Hollywood oh. and um, I didn't really know anybody down there. But me and Pat Chinita, we rode for the same companies, you know, um, yeah. we uh, genetic shoes. It uh -huh. was like a sister company off of Airwalk. 
Right. So anyways, me and Pat, and plus all the contests through the years and stuff, I got to know Pat pretty good. He's super cool, man. One of the I nicest know. dudes ever. I love and Tunia. of course, down there, that's who I reached out to. I'm like, who can I call to go skate? And dude, Jeremy Ray, like I was talking about Nottis, Jeremy Ray is my modern day Nottis. Like I looked up to Jeremy Ray, like the way he skates that's yeah. the shit I love. Frontside flips, frontside 360s, big 360 flips. Everything he did was big, you know? The, the water tower cover is like one of the best covers of all time. Yeah, yeah. Imagine doing that shit. That's <laughs> like the <new> guy. <laughs> For real. Yeah, it was sick, man. But yeah, so I got to link up with those guys, and we were hitting up a different skate park every week, like filming little edits, you know? Uh-huh. It was cool, man. I love skating with those guys. Okay. Fuck yeah. Um, do you want to give any shout outs to any of the homies or anything? It, it was sick for me, man. Like that day that you're talking about, we met in Sacramento and uh, I was just overwhelmed because I hadn't seen you and Richard in a long time. I, I see Andy from time to time and I see Jason kind of a lot because he's closer, but uh, it was just so cool catching up with you guys and like stoked to see you. You guys seem stoked to see me. Like the energy was really good. And then mm -hmm. you guys started telling me about the podcast and it kind of blew my mind. I was like, wait, you guys are, you guys have heard it. And you're like, yeah, some of the homies that are local, they told us like that you mentioned this and this, and we started listening. And I was like, man, that, that felt really good to me. Like I was like, wow, it's so cool. Like people like driving around, listening to it. I'm just like, yeah <laughs> dude being a truck driver i only have time I, all i have is time when i'm driving to listen, to listen you know huh? so i'll put on my my headphones or my earplug you know what i mean and yeah. i'll listen to all the podcasts all the time you know and and especially yours and even the other ones you know and and uh man i really appreciate you letting me come on here and talk to you like this because i have here my i've heard my name dropped a lot, you know, even on like the bigger ones, like nine club that has all these millions of whatever the fuck it is, you know, yeah. they, I hear my name a lot, but no one ever wants to like oh. bring me on or, you know what I mean? And, and let me be part of something cool, you know? So like, I just, just the fact that you're, you know, no, you're the homie. Fuck yeah. you, bro. And, and you've been family since ever, ever since think, like you said, you were filming us all the time, bro. So you were part of the click. You know what I mean? Yeah. Poncho and, and Danny and Poncho's my main homie still to this day, dude. I went to one of his comedy shows recently in Hollywood. And I was going to ask you, I need to do that. It's funny, bro. It's so good, dude. He had me rolling, man. I gotta do it. Fuck. We, so what I was just telling you, I, me and my wife went to San Diego and on the way back, we drove home on a Thursday. We had to be mm -hmm. back Thursday night and Poncho yeah. was doing the comedy show on Friday. So I missed it by one day and I was like, fuck, should I just stay here and fly home? Like I was so <laughs> close. I was like, I gotta see it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, it's a must big, see. Big for love for Poncho. Yeah, man. So no, nah, just shout out to everybody, all my friends, Nick Freitas for being there my whole career shooting photos. Like he mm. was my main photographer, you know? Yeah. Like, of course, there were different ones going on trips and stuff, but Nick has been there since day one. So big shout out to Nick. I love you. Um, Karma, Alan, my brother. And a matter of fact, I tried my hardest to get Richard here today. Oh. I've been... I've been searching for him for the last two days, but is he he's, MIA? he's working. No, nah, he, he's busy working. Okay. I think it's just his schedule. He wasn't even able to get back to me. So I hit up my mom like, where's Rich? It's like, oh, he's busy working right now. I was like, all right, that's cool. I Fair wanted enough. him to come over today, but. Well, he, just so you know, he's welcome anytime, as are you welcome back anytime. I mean, you guys are family. So fucking if he's ever yeah. down, I'm definitely down. Oh, for sure. And once he sees my message, he's going to hate himself. He's going to wish he would have been. So we'll definitely do a part two, man, because yeah. I got a lot of crazy stories with Rich that that are pretty nuts, you know, as far yeah. as like the craziness shit, you know, the fighting him dropping as big as buff dudes, you know, having our back skating and, and our whole click. We had a click, the DSL. Shout DSL, out. Yeah. 
we escape Lokes, you know, and that's all of us homies here in Visalia, which we all had each other's back. And right. It's pretty cool. It wasn't like we're a real gang like Norteños or something. You know, we're just skateboarding homies. Yeah. But we, Having you know, fun. We all had our each other's back. You know what I mean? Totally. I don't know. It might have came off intimidating to some people, but when you get to know us, we're some of the nicest dudes ever. You know what For I'm saying? For sure. For sure. Yeah. No, it's interesting like that. I mean, it's the same thing. Uh, you get like these people that you don't know and maybe they act a little different from you and you're a little standoffish. And then you realize, wait, these fuckers are fucking nicer than anyone I know and more inviting. Yeah. And like, so never judge a book, book by its cover and like don't never, assume man. things and any of that. Yeah, dude. So nah, we might put out this like hardcore cholo type vibe, you know, but we're laid back dudes, you know? And so, yeah, it, it's cool, man. I got love for everybody out there. Love for everyone in the skating industry. I want to say uh, thanks to some of my sponsors. I ride for Killer Instinct Grip Tape. It's a oh. grip tape company mm -hmm. up north there. And uh, my homie Casper, he hooked me up with my own grip tape, you know, like it has my name on it and stuff, a signature grip tape. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I'm stoked, man. Shout out to those guys. I love supporting small businesses. You know, these big businesses, they, they ain't hurting. They, they're they cool. You know, I like supporting the small dudes that are coming up and that are strong. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And so, yeah, shout out to those guys. Shout out to Carlos from Save Soul Skate Bowls, Jason, Jesse, shout out. Nick, all the dudes that have my back, man. For sure. Fuck yeah, dude. Thank you so much for taking the time and good catching up. Uh, we always end the show with a um, song. Do you got something you want to fucking put on to fucking take us out of here? Uh, man, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, You I know what? I, I, I grew up listening to gangster rap, hip hop. I like rap music. You know what I mean? Ghetto so uh, why don't you end it off with some good Ni Andre Nicotina for me? Okay. Hell yeah. It could be anything. It could be Scotty 15. It could be honeycomb. It could be whatever. You know what I mean? But we some Bay area hip hop, throw something off for me, man. I like that. We just saw Nicotina did a show at the symphony with an orchestra, like just his songs, yeah. but no, no rapping. It was just the music. Yeah, and I know. It, it was amazing. I've been seeing all the promotions for that too, man. I was like, sick. I want to go to that. But with my crazy schedule, truck driving, it's hard too. So now I've just like, I schedule all my skateboarding stuff around my real work schedule. Cause that's okay. where, that's where my income comes in to, you know, For take sure. care of my family, which shout out to my daughters, um, Paisley and Kesley Paez and their mom, Kaylee, Kaylee Martin, you know, shout She's, out. I've been with these, you know, with her for like 20 plus years. Ooh. So yeah, I, I got a solid ass family up here, man. That's great. Your daughter's like, she's 20 ish. No, she's 16, 16, she's 16 okay. and they're super athletic. Um, she started out as gymnast and now she's one of the best cheerleaders around. She's a cheerleader uh, on the varsity squad for her high school in Visalia, in, in uh, Exeter. It's a small Exeter. town next to Visalia. Okay, sick. Dude. Yeah, and, and my little Kesley, she's twelve years old. She's a little comedian, bro. She oh, keeps yeah. me going all the time. Yeah, she's cool. So right. yeah, man, I got a great little family up here, dude. Well, I hope to fucking <clears throat> hang out this year. Uh, I think like the lockdown feeling and all the COVID weirdness is hopefully it's behind us and uh, the weather's getting better. So I'm hoping yep. to fucking hang out with some friends and. Let's try to fucking figure some out. If you guys come up, I was telling you, you guys got to come up and do a weekend at Jason's and we could go skate all those parks and fucking just have good vibes, barbecue, do it all. Yeah, we will for sure. I'll It'll be, be hitting you up ASAP, bro. You already know. Okay. I plan on, uh, you know, Jason's into the Harleys. He's got some badass bikes. Yeah. He's talking me into buy one, buying one. Oh. So I'm going to be getting a bike here pretty soon and I'll be mobbing up there and Sick. We plan on going to spend time with Cardiel. You know, John has a sick Harley too. These guys ride, yeah. you know, and they're a little quick up there. So yeah. I can't wait to be part of that, man. Totally. And, and shout out to my boy Ruben at Don Wapo Hot Sauce. Shout oh, out Don, Don Wapo. Yeah, some Don Wapo down in San Diego. That dude's been supporting me for the last few years too. So shout Great. out to Big Groups, man. I love you.
I love you too, Ruben. And I'm still waiting. You know what I'm talking about. We're only supposed to eat pizza, you moron. Well, thanks, dude. It was fucking stoked. I was hyped when uh, our paths were going to cross today. Like I realized, okay, Saturday, you got a window and I got a window. Let's finally do this. So yeah. stoked. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time. And uh, we'll we'll talk soon enough for sure. Definitely, Greg. Thank you so much, man. Talking Schmidt. I love it. <laughs> Cheers, yeah. dude. Appreciate you. Cheers. Okay, brother. We'll talk to you soon. And tell Richard I said hello. Bummed we missed him. Understandable. But like I said, anytime he's welcome. So yeah. I can work with his schedule if he wants to do it. Yeah, you already know, man. He, he's he got your back, too. You already okay. know. Sick, dude. <laughs> Cheers. All right, Greg. Love Later. you, brother. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. Also, please leave reviews and a five-star rating. It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com, where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes with extra photos and videos. Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at talkingschmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross by the band Nature. A very special shout out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt, where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper.